Welcome to I've Been There, where you will hear words of hope, promise, and encouragement. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your program host and your hope coach. I created this program with you in mind. I provide a venue, a forum for common everyday people who have been there. They share their stories of struggle, despair, loneliness, and hopelessness, but they also share words of hope and promise and they testify to God's faithfulness. I pray that through this program, God will grant you an extra dose of inner strength, peace, and hope to live another day. It is my hope and prayer that you will draw strength from others, Christians, who by God's grace have survived and whose faith has sustained them. So stay tuned for an inspiring hour as we testify to God's faithfulness. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, 28. Peace be with you. Have you ever had times when no strength you could find and the pressures of life weighed you down? I have felt that same way And all I can say There is hope if you'll only hang on Well, welcome and thank you for tuning in to I've Been There, a listener-supported ministry where we bring a message of hope to hurting people and encouragement to anyone who can, so we can live another day, so they can live another day. We are broadcasting from the studios of Webcast One Live and the Truth Network 99.3, and my co-host today is Pastor Gary Pilcher, who will open this up with scripture and pray us in. Uh, welcome, Pastor Gary. Thank you, David. It's always an honor to be with you and look forward to our time to share together today. Um, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7 says, in all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes though it be refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Peace be with you. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love for us, for your kindness to us. For the privilege that we have to know you and know that you know us and that you walk with us through all of the circumstances of life that we face. Just pray that during this time together that your name would be honored and that you would be exalted and that hearts and lives would be encouraged and touched. And we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Gary. Well, I'm so glad that you joined us today. I received a phone call two days ago. Our guest this evening is uh, Jeb and Linda Brewer. And that phone call was a friend, a mutual friend that we have. And she said, um, I have some people that y you need to meet that I think would be good to be on your program. That was two days ago. We had a chat on the phone. And it was really, I believe it was a divine appointment. Uh, I had an open slot and I was waiting God normally is the 11th hour kind of thing, ye of little faith. But after visiting with you, I just thought, this is it. This is going to be a very inspiring program. So I, I uh, welcome you to I've Been here. I've been There. I almost said I've been here. Uh, <laughs> I am here, <laughs> and you're here. But anyway, I welcome you, and you are in the midst of a storm. And um, when I ask you in this first segment if you can share what that storm is, and we'll go from there. Well, thank you for having us on the program. Um, as I talked to you earlier, um, I have cancer, and there's a lot of people that have cancer, and have been dealing with that for a number of years. Um, and unfortunately, it's developed to the point now where there's really nothing that the medical community, the doctors say they can do. So you're kind of at the end of their ability to offer hope from the medical side. Of course, we have hope in Christ, so there's always hope. But just to kind of share 
how we've gone through that journey, it kind of starts uh, like 13 years ago. It's a long time ago. Wow, 13 years you've deal been dealing with this. It was on December 4th. Um, it's actually my mother's birthday. So that's not a very nice Mother's Day mm. or birthday gift is went in just for a, an appointment. I just got recently appointed to a pretty stressful job as a, a department head. And, and at that time I was in the Air Force Reserves and this was when we were in Afghanistan and building up to Iraq and I was on 24 hour recall to maybe be called back up and uh, dealing with a lot of things. And so going to the doctor, it's like, yeah, I got a st stomach issues, but it's probably just stress, you know, but we'll go ahead and do some tests just to make sure it's just stress and uh, ended up um, the GI doctor and the colonoscopy. And as you're waking up, the nurse will say, well, the doctor wants to talk to you. It's like, oh, okay. You know, and he's like, I got some bad news, you know, uh, you're going to need surgery. I said, okay, well, maybe we can schedule it after Christmas. And he goes, um, no, I've got a surgeon lined up. You need to meet her in a couple hours. We might get it tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> mm. It's like, uh, you think it's pretty serious? He goes, yes. He goes, we're surprised that uh, you haven't actually had any problems to date because the, the tumor at the time was so large. It, it was, they were amazed that it hadn't actually ruptured the intestine. So, you know, God was, even at the beginning, you know, that's a, that's a, a blessing there that he got me in there and got there so we could had wonderful surgeons and, and um, oncologists and uh, good medical care. But at the time, oh, we had four children at home. And so I had just like 48 hours to go from everything's fine. I just have an upset stomach to now you've got cancer and you need surgery tomorrow or the next day. It actually was Friday. It was uh, instead of Thursday, but we, you know, so we had the surgery, but it's a little time to talk to the kids, you know, just a night before the next surgery. And so one of the things we did is Psalms 20 was sort of our, our chapter that we latched onto and at the time. And, um, yeah, I just read a little excerpts out of there. Yeah, it's, please do. Wow. Uh, it starts out, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. And uh, verse 5, uh, we will rejoice in your salvation in the name of our God, and we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. And uh, verse 7, some trust in chariots and some in horses, <clears throat> but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. So one of the things we did is had the kids get some construction paper. Each one made their own banner. How old were they? Mm. 8, 11, 13, and 15. So, so they all made their banners. We put up over the fireplace. So kind of a thing to focus that, you know, God was our help. And we talked about, you know, trusting in chariots and horses. It's like, well, there's doctors, but that's not where you put your trust, you know. Trust is in God, so it, it doesn't matter. Because people are like, well, don't you want a second opinion? It's like, well, the, I don't really have time. <laughs> so people are like, well, maybe you should go someplace else. You know, there's all these things that people think, you know, is this the right treatment? But it's like, in the end, it's not the doctors and everything that's going to be the one that heals you. It's God. So we weren't going to put our trust in the doctors and the medicine. We were going to make it available to us, but that's not where our trust was. We weren't going to trust in the chariots and the horses, but we put our banners up to God and the surgery went well and uh, chemotherapy. And it was at the time they, they classified it as stage three. Although they, looking back, they said it was probably four. They just didn't know it at the time. So apparently it's fairly serious and, you know, they come up with the statistics and we never really talked about those, but it's, you know, maybe 60, 40 survival rates. And we went for five years, you know, and, and in the cancer world, every time you go another year, another test without something coming back, everybody gets, the doctors kind of went from cautious optimism. They were getting pretty excited, you know, it's going and nothing's come back. And so you get to this five year mark and in the cancer world, that's a, you know, that's, that, that's, that's what you want to get to right. and come to find out it's kind of arbitrary, you know, why not five years, six months, but so you get to the five year mark and oncologist is pretty excited. And, you know, he even dared to use the C word of cure is like, well, this is cured. And that's great. You know, so you're pretty optimistic. Well, two days later I had, I was on this yearly schedule for colonoscopy. So I go back in for colonoscopy just a couple days later, happened to be my brother's birthday, December 7th. Go in there, um, you know, Mr. Brewer, you need to talk to the doctor. <laughs> what? Here we go. Here we mm -hmm. go again. A large tumor. Mm -hmm. Apparently, 
they had missed it and the scans and the, the doctors were completely baffled. Like, how could we, we've been monitoring you for five years and we thought you were done and gone. And now here's a large tumor and it's up in other places in the stomach and things. And, and um, so, you know, when you see the doctor's countenance fall and they're, you know, they're concerned, you're like, well, it's probably not good. And so we go more chemo and then another surgery and then more chemo and, and um, things are, you know, going okay. And then you know, a couple of years and it comes back again. And it comes back a third time. Third time. This time it's in the liver. So uh, that's definitely not good because now it's in another organ. And, um, and then at first at the liver, like, well, we can't even operate where it is at the liver because it was like in the middle of the liver instead on the edges. But then a blessing there was a, a doctor had just moved into town that uh, had just been certified on a new surgical procedure that allowed it to, to operate inside the liver. I'm not sure exactly what he did, but I think it was maybe more risky than I knew at the time, but that's okay. And, <laughs> And uh, that because uh, you're right next to the arteries or that go into the heart, so it's like you can bleed to death very quickly. And so don't tell me it came in on a fourth time. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll go there. So the, go through the, that surgery, and by this time the the surgeon's like, yeah, well, you know, when it comes back again, we'll still have quite a bit of liver. And I'm like, come back again, you know, I was just getting kind of tired of this stuff, and it's like, yeah, that's kind of where it's at. And then it comes back a fourth time. And then, of course, when it comes back to the fourth time, um, talk to the one surgeon, and he's pretty much like, you know, you need to go home, get your affairs in order. Um, you know, maybe you've got six months to live. Um, and the surgeon's like, you know, if it was me, I wouldn't even do chemotherapy because it makes you sick. And, you know, most of the times when you see people going through cancer and the hair, you know, I've, I've gone through three surgeries and two and a half years of chemotherapy, it's the chemo that makes you look bad. Your hair falls out and your teeth get loose and all those kind of weird things that happen. It's the cancer just kind of stars you to death, but it's usually the, the, the chemo is what makes you look, you know, scary. <laughs> and so when it came up the fourth time, he's like, well, I wouldn't even do the chemo. Well, we go to the oncologist and he's a much more positive. I, I don't know how he does his job, but he's very positive about it. He goes, well, we can s slow it up, uh, but obviously there's no cure. So we do some more chemo and, the thing is, is that that six months prognosis, that was 2010. Mm. So I'm going back to work, trying to get as much work as I can and doing what I can. It's just like, you know, it, you've got the cancer, but try not to let it define you. And, and you know, if, if God's going to heal me, he could heal me anytime. He could heal me at the beginning. He could have, could have kept the cancer away to start. He could wait to the end or he won't heal me. It's just really his decision. But just do what you, you know, whatever God lays out for you that day. Just try to be faithful in that. So that's what we've tried to do since 2010. And, and um, you know, it's, God's been very gracious. You know, here we are, 2015. I don't think uh, any of the doctors would have put any money on me to make it this long. And, and it's still active. It's still active. And, and it's, it's getting, uh, I, uh, I've gotten to the point where I can't work anymore just because of the the pain and the fatigue and I'm on more medication and things like that. So it always gives me an out here since I'm on medication. If I say something a little weird, or sure. it's like, yeah. I, Hey, I was on the pills. So don't, yeah. don't, but that's, that's kind of where we're at now. And so is, um, you know, it's, it's getting harder every day. And, and so kind of in a situation where it's probably months, um, but uh, it's not for me to know the time or hour, but mm -hmm. uh, certainly, feels closer <laughs> each day you can hear those you can hear those footprints and or those footsteps in the dark kind of you know it's like yeah it's getting hard you know to get up and get out of bed and just do the basic things of life we're coming up to a break you're going to hear music here in a second but i'm going to turn to linda real quick um before we go to break so about 30 seconds worth how are you doing um depends on the day doing okay. pretty well today but overall, really, um, God's grace has been amazing and the peace he's given us. That's how we oh. get through. Well, there's the music. What a great way to end segment one. We're going we're gonna to pick up on that statement. Thank you for being here today. It's been a blessing to have uh, Jeb and Linda here. And so make sure you come back for segment two. Thanks.
From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi, I'm Jay Michael McCoy, and about 20 years ago, I went to a used car salesman by the name of John Hewitt. He had a little shop over there on North 2nd Avenue called John's Auto Sales, and I bought a car. I found that experience to be one that I had never had before from a used car salesman. He was honest, he was dependable, he had integrity, and he did what he said he was going to do. Well, over the years, between my kids and grandkids, I purchased seven vehicles from John's Auto Sales. And last month, I asked him to be a sponsor. I can tell you about their huge selection. I can tell you about their years of experience. I can tell you about their honest integrity. But all I really need to tell you is that I bought seven cars, and you can trust them. John's Auto Sales, 5435 2nd Avenue, Des Moines. You need a good ride when you hit the trail. Trust the man with the cars, and he goes by the name of Big John. Big John. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. My name is Vicki. I've been there. Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. Psalm 71, 20. Peace be with you. Well, welcome back to uh, segment two. Uh, you've joined us in I've Been There, a listener-supported ministry where we bring a message of hope to hurting people and to anyone who just needs encouragement to live another day. We're broadcasting live from Webcast One Live and uh, Truth Network 99.3. And our guests today are Jeb and Linda uh, Brewer, I keep wanting to say Werner, I don't know why, <laughs> Brewer, and uh, we ended the first segment with me asking um, Linda how she's doing, and uh, I mean, a lot of times people focus on, obviously, the, the spouse that's uh, in the storm with uh, the disease, but you're in the storm too, and uh, so can you share from a spouse's standpoint a bit of your personal journey in this storm? Um, I gain a lot of my strength, obviously from God, but also from the spouse that he gave me. Um, Jeb gives me a lot of strength and encouragement, even though he's the one who's suffering and hurting. Um, I love spending time with him. So right there, that's, that's helped me get through each day. I think of um, the blessings of people that God has brought into our lives, um, specifically our our children. Obviously, they're going through it also, mm -hmm. but we've we've done it together as a family, and actually, I think that's strengthened our family. We yeah. we're closer because of that, rather than being farther away. We're closer. We've gotten to spend a lot of time together and encouragement, and mm -hmm. um, so they've helped our our 
our own siblings, our parents. Um, then you go out to the church family. We have an incredible church family that prays for us um, consistently. And uh, they just come alongside, and they see a need, they'll come along and help us. So we love our church family, too. And then God has brought people in our lives, um, whether it's through Jeb's work or mine, and just um, we've been blessings to encourage us by uh, spending time listening, helping however they can. It's been through people. It's been the support of others that really have helped us to do what we're doing. But it's because God has brought them into our lives. Mm -hmm. So I want to give him glory for that. And you're living with a day-to-day knowing that the cancer is, is active. And uh, that constant pressure just never goes away. Um, Pastor Gary? Um, When David and I were talking about your situation and your determination to really live out your faith through the storm, I was reminded of a missionary by the name of Stan. Um, It was uh, ministering in the Muslim world, in the Arabian Peninsula area. And um, while he was there, Ministry there involves building relationships with Muslims. You can't just put up a cross in a pulpit and start preaching if you want to last more than 30 seconds. So building relationships, and during that time was diagnosed with cancer. And um, they talk about their family and how they chose to deal with that rather than coming back to the United States to stay there. And he wrote a book called Dying Out Loud, and he felt like, one of the things the Muslim world hadn't ever seen was watching a person of faith, a Christian, die. And um, one of the amazing things that happened during Ramadan, which is the great feast of Islam, during Ramadan they say that the gates to hell are closed and the doors of heaven are open. It's a special spiritual time in the Muslim faith. And uh, Stan passed on one of the high holy days of Ramadan. And they commented about how much God must have loved him. And so the impact that was made by his choosing to live their faith out loud in the midst of the storm sounds to me a lot like what you've determined to do. Is that, is that kind of the approach you've taken or, or how do you see your storm in the, in the world you're living in? Yeah, I suppose. I mean, the, the word out loud, I don't know if that would describe us maybe quietly, but (laughs) (laughs) we just sort of that uh, idea is that, uh, you know, people come up and might say, hey, do you have a bucket list? Mm. Well, I don't know. I I guess I I had one. I've got, if I had a bucket list, I've gotten just about through it, but it it had things on there like the gutters were leaking and I had some fascia board to fix (laughs) and it looked an awful lot like a honey-do list, you know, some things I wanted to get done for Linda. And it's like, no, I don't, I did, what if, you know, what you're doing today and every day is what should be significant in your life. Sure. So why would you change sure. that if you, you know, if it was, if it was like, oh, I'm going to die tomorrow, I need to do something different. Well, you need to do something different now. I mean, don't, don't wait to get yeah, some really serious good. illness. So it was sort of the idea that, well, if God's put me here, if this is my job, I kept trying to work as long as I could. If I'm in this church, teaching Sunday schools, you know, I, you know, taught the little kids, I've, finally had to stop, you know, this year, but, you know, I keep teaching Sunday school, keep doing what you're doing, because if that's where God had you, until he tells you something different, keep doing it. So sure. if that's dying out loud, I guess that's what we're doing, but it's just keep doing what God puts in front of you. Have, have there been any unique opportunities, and, and maybe not, but because who knows what impact we're making, any unique opportunities in your storm to share your faith? Or is it just like you've said, it's just living every day, just living every day? Yeah, I, I think a lot of times as you go through your, your walk is you, you know, we see the things, the physical world and, and the real world is a spiritual world. And it's mm-hmm. oftentimes hidden from us and we don't know the impact. And I think we had talked about that before. How do you make impact on people? And you, quite frankly, you don't, you don't see it because it, it may be going on the heart. There's a, sure. a little, you know, sometimes I've, there's opportunities where people will say something and you're like, that's, that's amazing how God was working through me for you. I didn't, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have known that. 
um, I think Linda would you want to talk about our kids and some of the things that we've got to experience how this is seen mm -hmm. it working in our kids lives right um, yeah like I said we've gotten to spend a lot of time with them and they're they're grown now they're adults married um, having children that kind of thing and so they've as adults now talking and sharing back to us um, how Specifically, their dad has affected their lives. Um, for his birthday, they wrote some letters just to encourage him, saying, Dad, this is um, how you've blessed us, how God mm. has used you, um, not to build you up and being prideful, but to humbly see how God has used you in their lives. And we did just want to share one of the letters, if that's okay. Oh, that would be great. It kind of sums up, I think, how all of them feel. Now let's do it. That's wonderful. Okay. Starts off with, to be honest... I'm not even quite sure of the date of your first surgery, but I think that actually that doesn't matter because even though it changed a lot of things, it never really changed your faith, which was the most important part. I'm not going to say it hasn't changed you because obviously that's not true. But I can't recall back to pre-cancer days and think how that dad was the good one before he became bitter and angry because that never happened. I only recently realized... That was a real possibility in these kinds of situations, since I never really worried about it with you. I think that's what I'm most thankful for. If you had become angry and bitter, I would probably have become very cynical about everything you ever taught me about God, and that's a scary thought. Mm. Maybe I would have grown through it, but there's no need to give me the benefit of the doubt. Let's just say you avoided blame, blowing it big time. Not only did you <laughs> avoid the disaster, but you actually proved the Bible true and God faithful. Mm -hmm. Counting it all joy during trials can now be a real thing, thanks to your practical demonstration. So that, I mean, that was a blessing just to hear. Sure. Specifically how, how um, Jeb ha and his faith has impacted our kids. Well, and both of you obviously have a legacy. Uh, I actually have a letter here. Dear Mom and Dad, where do I start? How do I concisely write what is in my heart? How do I verbalize what I have learned about God by watching you too? I see the glimpses of the pain and difficulty of the cancer, and yet that difficulty has paled to observers in comparison to the brightness of your hope in God. I see, your cling, I see you cling to God's promises, his sovereignty, his grace. With this focus, you aren't navel-gazing and moaning in despair. Things aren't easy, but your focus on God has allowed you to focus on ministering to others. That ministry is intentional. It is noticed. It makes an impact. Whether you are serving as an elder at church, lending a listening ear, sharing a meal, building a cardboard chainsaw, not sure what that's all about, <laughs> sharing what you have learned about grace, or a myriad of other actions, you both are showing those around you that God is the one who gives you grace, and to him you give the glory. Thank you for being a living testimony. Love from your favorite firstborn, Janelle. <laughs> and uh, Gary has one that we received. This is from Pastor oh. Daniel. Dear Jeb and Linda, it's only been two years that I've known you, but in that short time, your testimony to the joy and sufficiency of Christ has been a great encouragement to me. Step by step in the progression of Jeb's cancer, you've entrusted yourselves to the Lord and depended on his faithfulness. Of all that has blessed me personally from your life and ministry, perhaps the greatest is that you refuse to make excuses when so many are available. You face the reality that you're physically unable to stand up during Sunday morning worship, you respond, that's all right. I'll sit down and join in praising God. You face the reality that you cannot mentally concentrate for more than two hours. You respond, I'll just adjust my sleep schedule so I'll have enough energy to make it through our elders' meetings. You face the reality of constant pain. You respond with a steady smile and a thankful heart. You face the reality that in all likelihood your husband will precede you in death. You respond, what can I do to serve and help him while he's with me? Let's do all we can to honor the Lord with the time we have left. So steady, so faithful. You have fought day by day to find your joy and delight in the risen Christ, and you've declared to us all, Christ is supremely satisfying. Amen. Thank you for such a testimony, Pastor Daniel. 
And we have more. But I'm going to give those to you after the program. It's not fair to love those. Not not because it'll make us cry in the movie. You know, here you know. <laughs> Lay those on us without giving us any preparation. So. I wanted to touch your heart, <laughs> Jeb. Um, you know, how we choose to live out our storms as Christians can be some of our best opportunities to witness to our faith. Do you think people involved in your life have been affected by your experience? I hope so. And ultimately, it's what God's choosing to do. So, I, you know, I, I don't know, and, and that's God's work. It's in his hands, so... I, Sometimes you can get discouraged, like, oh, I'm not making a difference in people's lives. But, you know, he's, he's a God that can part the Red Sea. He can do what he, he's going to do. So I'm just going to try to do whatever he sets in front of me and let him take the responsibility for the outcome. I was just thinking back earlier when you talked about um, yeah, if we've had opportunities to share mm -hmm. more specifically. Um, I do try to be conscious to take the opportunity to, when I talk about my husband and his illness, to turn things to a spiritual nature because that's where God has us. Um, that's, what he's, that's the road he's given us, and I want to, um, even though I don't do it well, I want others to know that we are trusting in God. Mm -hmm. Man. I'm going to take another break and uh, thank you so much for joining us today on I've Been There and uh, come back for segment three. Thank you. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fix them the problem today. If they have another problem five days down the road, it's still fixed right or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about, is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said.
My name is Bob, and I've been there. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23. Peace be with you. Welcome back to segment three. Our guests today are Jeb and Linda. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Brewer. Brewer. <laughs> I'm going to have to get my brain <laughs> jacked. <checked. laughs> Jeb and Linda Brewer. And, uh, you know, earlier in, in the program, Jeb, you had read uh, kind of a theme verse uh, that came out of Psalms. Uh, was that Psalm 20? Psalm 20. And you read that kind of was at the beginning of your journey. And then you had indicated to me that Linda, has, you've evolved into another verse that you wanted to share. That'd be Go ahead and share that, Linda. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. So we do not lose heart, though our, our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Amen. You want to talk about that transition? <laughs> well, I think, you know, it, um, all the Bible is true. And, and as you look in Psalms 20, I mean, it's a, it's a very triumphant um, kind of psalm. You know, God's conquering and God does conquer. He's going to win in the end. And, and sometimes we see these victories here in, in this earth, in this life. But um, the ultimate victory is... Um, after after this life so i think in, in psalms when you read that i think you know we were like yeah we're going to get the surgery where there's a lot of confidence and we're going to get through this and 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 now we're kind of at the stage where you know the, from the medical community it's like well, wow you know you're still coming in you know should we take your name off the the patient's list you know and you're on the first name basis at the oncologist office so yeah we got you you don't have, you know and you have to go up and say your name they got you and and so now it's like well this is nothing is inevitable, but it, from the medical community, it is. And it's like, well, you know, as we look at Corinthians, it's like what we see, this isn't, this isn't the, the, it's not, it is reality, but it's not the permanent reality. It's the temporary reality. And the victory is in the permanent reality. And, and this verse just kind of talks about that, you know, let's, let's not, the things that we see in our bodies and things, that's not the biggest issue. It's the eternal issue. I always kind of liken it to when you, uh, I think, as you get older and, you know, you, you read the obituaries. I don't know if that's good or not. I think we all do. <laughs> and I was always interested when people have cancer and there's, they always talk about, well, they lost the battle with cancer. You know, long battle, courageous battle with cancer, and they lost it. And it's like, you know, I don't, I don't see it that way. I see cancer is the one that's going to lose because mm. at the end you get a body that cancer can't attack. Mm. Right. So right. it's like cancer lost. A great perspective. That's right. And the other thing that we were talking about this morning, even on our walk, um, it helps us keep perspective when it says this light momentary affliction. So is Paul writing this, who he suffered a lot. It helps us keep perspective because it doesn't always feel light. It doesn't always feel momentary. Mm -hmm. But in eternity, it is. And that we have to look, we get to look forward to the eternal weight of glory. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, oh, it's just amazing. And it, um, it does help keep perspective where we're at today. One of the things you, that you, um, as you read the scripture, I thought, you know, about not losing heart. The Bible says a merry heart does good like a medicine. And before the program, we're talking about a sense of humor. People that know me know that I say on a regular basis, a day without laughter is a day wasted. 
I've found in hospital rooms or in hospice centers or wherever that there's something that God does when we laugh. I, I really believe that. So I'd, I'd like for you to talk about the role that just your sense of humor um, has played in this whole process. Maybe, maybe freeing someone to just know that it's okay to laugh when things aren't funny. Well, I think Linda has a good story of uh, me being funny when I didn't really intend to be funny, I guess. But you're just always funny. I'm always funny. Yeah, we do like to laugh. We were sharing that with David earlier that our family enjoys laughing a lot. And um, I'm still being respectful to my husband when I tell this story because he gave me pers- <laughs> he gave me permission to okay. say it. We are witness. Oh, we're okay. good. Because <laughs> this is when he was coming out of um, your second surgery, I believe, yeah. and our all of our kids were there and we're walking with him um, after recovery. And he's coming out of anesthesia. So th- the neat thing about when he comes out of anesthesia, he is always praising God and telling me how wonderful of a wife I am. Mm. So those are. His, two main topics. So he, he, um, we were talking with him and we were laughing. I don't know. He was saying some funny things and we were joking back and forth. We get into the room where he's going to be and they're putting him into the bed and the door is open and there's a nurse pushing a wheelchair with a patient in there and said something to him about, um, Wilbur, we're going to be going somewhere. And Jeb hears the, the word Wilbur. And he's like, why is there a pig in my room? Ah, uh. Because Wilbur is right. Charlotte's sure, web, sure. Right, right? And we were just, and he had just got done telling us, "Stop laughing, this really hurts." Because oh. you know he has this incision. <laughs> sure, right. So then he says that, and we we're just standing there, about ready to explode, because it was it was pretty funny. <laughs> and you thought it was funny after we told you, yeah, and you could funny. remember it. I could remember it. Great, right? that sounds funny. <laughs> yeah, it but, was. But I mean, that's just kind of who he is. He says things like that, and. Do you try not to laugh when you have all those incisions? You know, your stomach's just been cut open. That's <laughs> true. Like, right. No laughter, please stop. That's right. But yeah, laughter, it just feels good. Yeah. It just does. It just helps the stress. I mean, and it's fun. It's fun. My wife's goal every day is to make me laugh at least once. <laughs> that is. She says, made you laugh. That's once. <laughs> then before we go to bed, she'll feel, do something goofy. And she goes, made you laugh. That's four <laughs> times today. You know, and it's just, it's just good to have that. Mm -hmm. I uh, wanted to share with you, there are people that are watching this program right now, as we mentioned, that that are hurting. Um, They're ready to throw in the towel. Uh, You know, the goal of this, I've been there, is to bring a message of hope and ultimately to uh, testify to God's faithfulness. But uh, knowing that there are people watching this or will be watching uh, a video later tonight or, or on the website, I'd like you to kind of imagine that those folks that are hurting, that are listening, and there's your camera. I'd like you to speak into the camera and uh, share whatever you'd like to uh, to give them hope to live another day. I think what the most important part about hope is that you've you've got to, um, I think Daniel talked about the idea of coming to this practical reality. I'm an engineer, so facts on the ground are what I live with. And the facts on the ground are we're all going to die. You know, there is no cure for that. There is no medicine. It's just when and how. And so the first order of business is, you know, you got to get right with God. And mm. that's, you know, confessing, repenting, turning to Jesus and asking for forgiveness of your sins. Once that's done, then there's hope unbounded available because mm-hmm. everything else from there on out is just gravy because it, the victory is done. And so that's the hope is eternity. Now, there's a lot of living let to do on this earth, and um, there's going to be difficulties. But in those difficulties, you know, stay in the fight. Don't give up because uh, in that there's purpose. God will be doing things, and you will get to see those. And every day, that's an opportunity to get to know a little more about God. And when we get to heaven, it'll all become clear. It won't be clear now. There's just so many times you really can't understand things. But not understanding what's going on doesn't mean that it's not significant, that people don't care, and most of all, Christ cares. Mm -hmm. He cares more for you than anybody else could ever. Mm. Thank you. Well, that's our end of segment three. We're going to take a break. Thank you again for joining us, and make sure you stop in for segment four because we have some special things prepared. Thanks.
From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi, I'm J. Michael McCoy, and about 20 years ago, I went to a used car salesman by the name of John Hewitt. He had a little shop over there on North 2nd Avenue called John's Auto Sales, and I bought a car. I found that experience to be one that I had never had before from a used car salesman. He was honest, he was dependable, he had integrity, and he did what he said he was going to do. Well, over the years, between my kids and grandkids, I purchased seven vehicles from John's Auto Sales. And last month, I asked him to be a sponsor. I can tell you about their huge selection. I can tell you about their years of experience. I can tell you about their honest integrity. But all I really need to tell you is that I bought seven cars, and you can trust them. John's Auto Sales, 5435 2nd Avenue, Des Moines. You need a good ride when you hit the trail. Trust the man with the cars, and he goes by the name of Big John. Big John. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. My name is Dave. I've been there. I pray that out of God's glorious riches, He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inmost being so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ for you. And to know this love that surpasses all understanding, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, verses 13 through 20. Peace be with you. Well, welcome back to our fourth and final segment of I've Been There Today. Uh, our guests have been um, Jeb and Linda, and uh, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. <laughs> Brewer. <laughs> Brewer. And, uh, but that, there's the humor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 there's the humor. But when my wife listens to this, she's going to say, I'm putting you on a waiting list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, we so thank you for being here. Thank you for co-hosting Pastor Gary and for Ryan in the control room and all the stuff he does behind the scenes. I'm going to uh, give you an idea of what's happening next week. My guest next week, and I've been there, will be Chris Adair. If ever there was a mess that has become a message and a test that has become a testimony, it would be Chris's life. But not just one test. We're talking about multiple tests. You will be inspired, and she will testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of her many storms. So tune in next Thursday. You have brought along something to share, um, Jeb. Yeah, I had, uh, when I was still able to work, I had this uh, quote that I had stuck up next to my desk. It's uh, from a former White House press secretary, Tony, Sto- Tony Snow. Uh, he got colon cancer, same kind I had, and he he passed away, I think, like in 2007, and he wrote this in Christianity Today, and I, I just liked it so much, I put it up uh, by my desk, and I still have it. And uh, he wrote, through such trials in regards to his, his cancer, God bids us to choose, do we believe or do we not? Will we be, be bold enough to love, daring enough to serve, humble enough to submit, and strong enough to acknowledge our limitations? Can we surrender our concern in things that don't matter? so that we might devote our remaining days to things that do. Hmm. Oh, I love you, Jeff. Linda, you have something that you're going to share? Yeah. Um, this is a uh, writing from Reverend Billy Graham from his Hope for Each Day devotion book, Reach for His Hand. The Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you, Deuteronomy 31, 8. 
Once many years ago, when I was going through a dark period, I prayed and prayed, but the heavens seemed to be brass. I felt as though God had disappeared and that I was alone with my trial and burden. It was a dark night for my soul. I wrote my mother about the experience and will never forget her reply. Son, there are many times when God withdraws to test your faith. He wants you to trust him in the darkness. Now, son, reach up by faith in the fog and you will find that his hand will be there. In tears, I knelt by my bed and experienced an overwhelming sense of God's presence. Whether or not we feel God's presence when, we, when our way seems dark, our faith by faith we know he is there. You can stake your life on his promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5. Any parting thoughts, Pastor? Uh, one of the things that impresses me about your handling of the struggle is just not looking at it as a curse from God, but rather a journey that God has something for us. I have a, a first cousin whose wife was just killed in a motorcycle accident. And you talked about us all being terminal. None of us are getting out of here alive. Um, would would you, is that how you'd characterize the journey you've been on, rather than trying to war against it, but recognizing that God has something in it, and almost embracing the journey while not embracing the disease? Yeah, it, it's in our struggle that we give God the glory. Sure, it's not the the end point, but it's it's how we fight. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't. Um, it's in the book about uh, the lone survivor, and as they were all fighting they kept telling each other stay in the fight stay in the fight hmm good good word as I say when you mentioned embracing that's kind of how I visualize it it's that I don't want to fight against where God has us mm, this sure. is where he has us we want to be content we want to be joyful my prayer is to never become bitter mm -hmm. um, but to embrace that and to live the best we can, trusting in Him, mm -hmm. just giving Him glory. What an inspiring program. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm going to ask you to pray with me. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thanks that I am free. Grant that I may always know that you died and rose for me. As I journey through my life, I trust that you will be right beside me, now and always, I surrender my life to Thee. Amen. Listen to the words of verse 3 of our theme song, I've Been There. Thank you for listening to I've Been There. This weekly program airs live through video streaming webcast from 5 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time every Thursday from the studios of webcastonelive.com and is accessible to anyone in the world with an Internet connection. The program is then rebroadcast on Saturday mornings at 10 o'clock Central Standard Time 
on the Truth Radio Network, KTIA 99.3 FM, for those of you who live within a 60-mile radius of Des Moines, Iowa. And for those of you outside of Central Iowa, you can listen to the 10 o'clock Saturday morning program through the Truth Network iPhone app from anywhere in the world. Or you can look for the video link that is posted every Thursday night on my Facebook page. You can also sign up for free to become a part of the I've Been There Mission Partner Club by sending your email to I've Been There dot ministries at gmail dot com, where you'll receive a video link of the program once a week and an announcement about the next week's program. All of our shows are archived on the I've Been There Ministries YouTube channel and also at webcastonelive.com. Thanks for listening and for your support. For further information, you can call 515 414 0957.